Hello and welcome back to my channel. Recently I made a video called Bad Writing Habits where I talked about five of the very bad tendencies that I used to have with my writing and how I had sort of worked on getting through those, why they were bad, all of that, and I thought it would make an interesting sort of sequel to talk about reading habits. You wouldn't think that there would be such a thing as a bad reading habit or a bad way of approaching reading, but actually there are some and I have struggled with some of them and maybe you have too. If this doesn't make sense yet, keep watching because I will give you some examples and it will probably make a lot more sense then. At least I hope so. That is the goal of the video. These are habits that were definitely detrimental at least for my reading and they actually affected my enjoyment of reading and that is definitely not what we want because reading is supposed to be fun. Even if you're reading something educational or something that you don't necessarily connect with right away, there should be some enjoyment that you're getting from that reading, some sort of benefit, and if it's not then there's a problem. Unless of course you're reading something for class and then and that's sort of a different type of obligation. But hobby reading, which is what I'm talking about here, should be fun, you should be getting some sort of enjoyment out of it. So these are habits that affected my enjoyment that I've had to work on, and a little bit about also how I managed to break these habits. I'm pretty sure a lot of you will relate to this first one, but one very bad habit that I fell into for a time was feeling obligated to read whatever was trending, even if I had no interest in that book. I absolutely love the booktube and the authortube communities and I love the Twitter writing communities that exist and on Instagram and everywhere online. There are so many brilliant communities. They have brought me so many more benefits than they have negative aspects, but one negative aspect that affected me for a while and that I just had to learn how to manage better was this obligation, this feeling that whatever was trending within those communities, whatever all the booktubers were loving, I needed to read it. If I said somewhere online that I hadn't read something that was super popular, I would often get comments about it, like, why haven't you read it? You really should read it. And these are not comments meant to make me feel bad. Of course, I'm not trying to put any blame on anyone else. They're often, usually, almost always, just because someone really wants me to read it because they're enthusiastic about it. But what I was doing was letting this affect me, letting me feel obligated. I would just pick up stuff and I would buy stuff or I would rent stuff that I had zero interest in and then inevitably I wouldn't like it because I had no interest in it. Occasionally I would like something I didn't expect to like. That can happen. But usually I just didn't enjoy it very much. It wasn't my cup of tea. It wasn't something I wanted to read. But I read it because I felt like I had to. At the end of the day, the only way to get past this bad habit is to take it upon yourself. To not let anyone's recommendations or enthusiasm shared with you. To not let that be a weight, but just a nice comment from someone who really wants you to read something because they love it, but if you choose not to read it, that shouldn't disappoint them, and it doesn't matter if it disappoints them because at the end of the day, you need to be reading what you want to read, and they can read what they want to read, and you can recommend stuff all you want to each other, but you shouldn't feel like you have to then read it because someone was nice and said it was good. Trend chasing is a really big problem with both writing and reading, and it can feel very much like if everyone else has read it, Oh, peer pressure, don't you love it? It never goes away. It can feel like you need to read it and you need to be part of it and you're not a real fantasy lover or you're not a real young adult literature lover if you don't read this thing or if you haven't read this thing. But it really doesn't matter. Another bad reading habit and one that I'm still kind of working on because it's difficult for me, but that's to force myself to finish every book that I start. I am so, so bad at DNFing books. I cannot do it. I say that and this is supposed to be on habits that I've broken. I'm getting better at it. I am getting better. But before that, I don't know that I ever DNFed a book. I would actually rather viscerally hate what I was reading and really not enjoy it and just make myself get through it and force myself to get through it because I felt the obligation. I'd started it, I'd gotten this far, and this far could be as little as 20 or 30 pages. Once I'd started it, I had a really tough time stopping it. But it's such a waste of time. It is such a waste of time if you give something a fair shot, because I always think you should give it a fair shot. If it has a bit of a slow start, or maybe if it doesn't kind of resonate with you at first, maybe it will get better. But once you've made it through the first few chapters, once you've made it through 50 pages, if it's really not resonating, if you haven't been hooked yet, it's likely you're not gonna get hooked. And even if you would, it's probably not worth trying to wait until that moment when it gets there. If it hasn't gotten there, if you're not feeling it, if you feel like you're wasting time, if you don't want to read the book, don't read the book. Another pitfall I fell into when I was forcing myself to read these books I did not like was I would actually lose my interest to read altogether because I don't like to be in the middle of too many books. Normally I limit myself to one, two, three maximum books at a time and I used to just be kind of a one book at a time type of person. 
So if I was reading something I didn't like and if I really didn't want to read it, I would just let myself fall out of the reading habit completely. So it would be weeks when I would not read a single chapter because the book I had chosen to plunge myself into and then not let myself get out of wasn't my cup of tea. It just wasn't something I liked. So it actually like kind of brought me away from reading for a while. So I've learned now and I hope I'm much better at it. I still struggle to do enough stuff, but I do sometimes because I've learned that life is too short and it's better to maintain a good reading habit with something that actually makes you want to read. Another bad habit that I have very much improved but am still struggling with is multitasking while I'm reading. It's so counterintuitive. It doesn't make any sense, but I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I multitask for my job. I do content marketing and social media marketing, and the type of job that I have is just it's just constantly peppering me with stuff. Plus, I'm just kind of a natural multitasker. I am just, I don't know, I'm impatient. I like to just have things going all at once. So it's actually bled into my reading habits and for a very long time, especially when I was still kind of discovering this about myself, I actually got to the point where I couldn't read a single chapter without checking my phone, texting someone back, or I'd decide, okay, maybe I should play some music. So I'd read a page and then decide, let's start some music. Not even a chapter, you guys, not even one chapter. The reasons for this could stem from many different problems, such as I was forcing myself to read a book that I should have just DNF'd, or maybe I just wasn't in the right mood to read, so I should stop trying to force myself to read and let myself go off and do something else for a while. Whatever the reason that caused this multitasking craziness, or maybe it was just because I needed to like slow my brain down, I had to break the habit. I just had to break the habit. And again, I still struggle with it sometimes because I still do a job that is very, very multitasking heavy. I'm still the same person. I'm still someone who likes to be super efficient and productive and do lots of things at once if I can manage to do it. But when it comes to reading, I really had to discipline myself and I had to teach myself or rather reteach myself how to focus. This one's kind of tricky, but for a while I got into the very bad habit of basing my opinions of a book off of someone else's, or at least feeling very pressured to. Sometimes this is because of a kind of general perception, like it seems like everybody loves or hates this book, or sometimes it was based off of a Goodreads review, like it has really good reviews on Goodreads or really bad reviews on Goodreads. Other times it's based off of what a specific person thinks. I feel like I should feel the same way because we have similar interests. I think this really stems from a sense of self-doubt, like I would get to the end of a book that was really popular or that like a lot of author tubers that I liked liked or a lot of book tubers I liked liked or I liked the author so I felt like I should like this book but I didn't like it. I would doubt myself. I would actually doubt my own opinion that I had as if there was something wrong with me for not liking something that I felt like I should like. I don't mean that I was just dishonest to other people about my opinions, like I really loved something but I felt like I should hate it so I told everyone I hated it, or I really hated something but I felt like I should love it so I told everyone I loved it. I mean it was an actual self-doubt problem and normally more often than not I wouldn't tell people how I felt about it because I was so not confident in how I felt about it. I actually created some sort of blame and put it on myself. Like I was missing something. I must have missed the brilliance of this book or I must have misread something because I interpreted this character this way. I didn't like this character or I loved this character that other people say I should hate. So I must have missed something. I must have misread something. I must have misinterpreted something. I must be at fault here in some way. To the point where I would actually want to reread the book or I'd want to start reading reviews about the book and read more into it and try and figure out what I missed. Kind of messed up actually to say it out loud, but it's something that I think is very tempting for a lot of us, especially if you're very active in booktube or authortube communities or if you have lots of friends who read books. It's so, so, so easy to fall into this habit. It's good if you want to read about something and maybe rethink your opinion on something. It's always good to think about those things. Sometimes you might find that you miss something or you know that maybe you actually your opinion changes over time but it shouldn't be because you feel like you were wrong in some way it should be because you actively want to discover more or want to see if maybe there's something else it's because you're curious you know those are all good motivations i can't say the temptation has gone away and i don't think it will but when it comes to opinions and what you like and dislike yeah i've just had to learn how to trust in myself if i don't like something or if i love something i need to just be able to trust myself the fifth and final bad reading habit that I have mostly gotten out of the habit of is skimming or speed reading. As I said before, when I was forcing myself to read stuff I didn't like, 
skimming was often a part of this and speed reading and I think as I have stopped doing this and as I have opened up this window of the DNF of letting myself drop a book if I didn't want to finish it. Skimming has been easier to avoid, but even so, even if I'm reading something I enjoy, I sometimes will find myself kind of trying to speed read because I get impatient and I'm just ready and I either want to get to the next book in the series or I just want to find out what happens in the series or I have another book on my TBR list I'm really excited about so I want to just get through this book. But it's a terrible habit because you don't actually have time to enjoy what you're reading and you miss a lot. Some of the big red flags I was starting to find was that I would read two or three pages and I'd realize I had no idea what had just happened because I'd let my brain go off in some other direction and just skimmed the words and I did not even pay any attention to what was happening. Sometimes I would even find myself losing interest in the book and I would realize it's not because I don't like the book, it's because I haven't let myself fully fall into this book. I haven't put myself into these pages and let myself be immersed in this story. And if I could just do that and stop skimming and speed reading and trying to make everything so efficient, actually I would really enjoy this book. So sometimes I'd have to start from the beginning or start from the beginning of the chapter or just kind of work with whatever bare bones I'd gotten from the story and figure it out as I go because I'd missed stuff from before. So many problems with skimming and speed reading. Everyone does have their own reading pace. So some people are very slow readers. Other people are just naturally very quick readers. And I do think I'm one of those. I am a quick speaker. You might notice from my videos. So I think I'm also just a naturally kind of speedy reader but I do have limits. Mostly to break this habit, I just had to force myself to read slower and to take things slower. I eliminate distractions and I think more than anything, I don't give myself unreasonable TBRs anymore. I used to have these extended TBRs and I used to get so overwhelmed with everything I had to read. And I think that encouraged this habit of really trying to speed read and get as much done as possible. And I've just admitted to myself, I'm not gonna get through that much. I'm not gonna overextend my limits here. And I'm just gonna take things as they come because the main thing about reading, at least for me, but I think for all of us, is just enjoying reading. As a writer especially, I would want people to read my words and to enjoy my words. And if they didn't like it, I would want them to put it down. And if they loved it, I would hope that they weren't multitasking or skimming. I would hope they were just taking their time with that book. So I'm also trying to apply those things to my reading habits with the author in mind sometimes, thinking about them and how they would want their story to be appreciated. So those are five bad reading habits that I used to have that I either have broken or have mostly broken by now. I would love it if you would leave me in the comments below if you also share some of these bad reading habits or if there are any other bad reading habits that you're working on or that you have had to crack in the past. Let me know those in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like so that I know you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications if you wanna see more reading and writing and generally bookish videos on this channel. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more regular updates and I also post especially on Instagram, what I'm reading. So if you're curious what I'm reading right now, head over to Instagram and you can probably find a story or a feed post about what I'm reading. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you very soon in another video.